Some people think your success is measured by the amount of intelligence you have. Life has taught me it's not about that. It's about working hard towards your goal, never quitting until you get there. Don't stop till you get there. Let's pass. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, officer requirements. Uh, sometimes I get people who want to uh, become an officer in the armed forces. I just want to clarify that there might be other ways uh, that you could become an officer after you join. I'm basically focusing more right now on people who are enlisting because there are other steps you can take once you're in. There's also other types of officers like warrant officer uh, or other ways of becoming another type of officer. But this is focused more on when, when people want to become an officer uh, when they enlist for the first time. Uh, so first, uh, let's talk about uh, the first requirement. Uh, all the branches, you have to have a bachelor's degree uh, to become an officer. So that's the first requirement. You have to have a bachelor's degree. Also, um, it's not just passing the test or, or getting a good score in the test. You have to compete for a position. Let's say, uh, let's say 3,000 people solicit to become an officer on, in the army. Well, you have to be the, if there's 200 positions, you have to be the top 200. So you're, you're competing for a position. So they, you'll have to make a res, uh, you have to provide a letter of recommendation. Uh, they'll look at your, your, your academic uh, grades. Uh, in university, the, you have to get letter of recommendations from uh, people. Uh, so you, you have to uh, also, uh, some, some of them require you to write like an, a, a little, uh, an essay of why you, uh, you should be an officer. So there's, there's other requirements. Uh, right now, I'm just going to talk about the test, but you will have to submit a packet uh, and it's like competing, they're, they're going to evaluate it, you're going to go to a board, they're good, you're going to do like an interview. So it's not just getting the score and you're an officer. It's not that simple. Um, just clarifying that out. Anything I say, you should corroborate with a recruiter of the branch you want to join. Since uh, this could change, uh, this is just uh, information, general information that I've gathered talking to recruiters and uh, by helping people pass the ASVAP for over nine years, but uh, maybe in one year, the requirements change. So uh, you should always use this video as a guideline and get more specific information uh, from the recruiter you wanna join the branch. So um, first let's talk about uh, the GT score. So the GT score, uh, Army, Coast Guard and Marines look at the GT score. Uh, GT score is made up of AR, PC, WK. So arithmetic reasoning, paragraph comprehension, and word knowledge. Those are parts of the ASVAP. That's what makes up the GT score. So basically, if you want to become an officer in Army, Coast Guard, or Marines, you have to get GT 110. For Army, for Coast Guard, GT 109. And uh, I should have wrote here GT and here GT. So. Now, Marines is not just the GT. Marines look at AFQT 74 or more and a GT of 115. Or you could also have, if you took the SATs, you could have over 1,000 in the SATs and also qualify. Again, this is to qualify to be considered to become uh, an officer. Now, uh, Army 110 GT. Coast Guard 109 GT, Marines will be 115 GT or and and 74 AFQT plus. So if you get 77 AFQT, 78 AFQT, or if you took the SATs and you got a thousand or more, uh, that would kind of also uh, get you. Uh, you would be able to be considered for an officer, uh, officer school, officer candidate, etc. Now again, repeating. GT is made of ARPC WK. Some people say, so how do I know if I'm going to get the 110? So you just have to practice. If you know that what counts for those numbers is ARPC WK, so you should give more consideration to those three subjects and try to study them a little bit better uh, so you could get that, that, um, that score. Now, AFQT here, 
is AR, PC, WK, and MK. AR, PC, WK, and MK. It, those are the parts for AFQT. So they're kind of related. Um, now, Navy is a little bit different because Navy officer, they have a different test called the OAR. I took it, I passed it, I've helped students pass it. Um, if you are considering to study and go to the Navy officer, uh, just write to, and you contact me, just let me know, hey, I'm interested in Navy officer and I will tell you how I could kind of rearrange the course more guided towards that. Same thing with AFOQT, I've helped people pass the AFOQT. You would have to let me know because people who are going to Navy or to Air Force, I kind of modify the course a little bit to cater more towards that. Uh, if you are among the, those people, you would have to let me know so I could tell you and send you the resources more guided towards that in the adequate time. Now, going back to the requirements, the OER, I took it, it's not easy. It's a difficult text, test. Um, the paragraphs were much more complicated than the ASVAB paragraphs. They were uh, kind of monotonous. Uh, you could, there were boring paragraphs, um, kind of tedious to read. Um, so yeah, and uh, the math, uh, considerably, some were similar, some were a little bit harder. I'm a mathematician, so uh, I kind of didn't have any trouble there, but putting myself into the position of a person, of a student, uh, you should have a good background in math, uh, per calculus, advanced algebra. Yeah, it's a little bit harder than the OER, than, than, the, than the normal ASVAB in math. So the thing for the Navy, you have to be well prepared because you have three attempts in your life. So there's apparently there's three versions. So you can't take it more than three times in your life. That's what I've been told. That's what Google says. That's what other people have told me. Uh, again, I've passed. I felt people pass. Um, it's a little bit harder. The good thing is if you try the OER and you don't pass, uh, you have two more attempts. So you have three attempts. And if you never pass, you can still join uh, and, and serve as enlisted, you know, but uh, you, you can try. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's a little bit harder than a normal ASVAB. Um, and then the AFOQT, personally, I've never taken it. I, I, don't, I, I don't lie. I was disqualified because of my vision. Uh, so I wasn't going to fake that I was going to join the Air Force to then uh, take the AFOQT. Uh, that wouldn't have been correct of, of me. So I, I never took it. I wish I could take it. Um, but I couldn't. I've helped people pass. I'm pretty confident I would pass it with a high score uh, because this is kind of what I do for a living. I solve mathematical problems. Students send me stuff. I take tests for a living. Um, it, what I've heard students tell me, um, I, I don't know honestly how difficult it is. I know I've had people pass it. I study people, prepare them, they pass it. So, so I, I couldn't tell you how much more difficult it is from a Navy test. I did take the Navy test. Navy OER, so I kind of have an idea of the difficulty compared to an ASVAB. So the difficulty compared to an ASVAB, I'd say it's 50% more, giving it a number. So I'd say it's like 50% more harder than an ASVAB, maybe 60% harder. Um, I'm assuming Air Force should be also harder uh, than a normal ASVAB. It's not going to be easier. I'm 100% sure it's not easier. Um, it should be also harder. Uh, you have two attempts in your life. That's why you should study before you go, either with a tutor or with somebody else. The good thing is, if you don't pass, I've had people, I've had students not pass the AFOQT the first attempt. They take the ASVAB, they pass the ASVAB, they join the military. When they're in the Air Force, uh, let's say for one or two years, um, then they, uh, they can take the test from inside and they have passed. So I've had those scenarios. Uh, it's always have a plan A, have a plan B, have a plan C. It can't all be one thing. It also depends on the rush you have to join. So somebody who has a rush to join, let's say he wants to join in two months. He doesn't have a job. He has a necessity. So this is a process that's not going to be super fast because you have to qualify. You have to do your physical, everything. And then you also have to submit a packet. And then you also have to be evaluated among all the candidates. To, to, so sometimes people prefer uh, take they get the 110 or they get the 115 or they get or they pass the OER. 
Some people prefer to join as a listed and then transition to officer. Other people can wait uh, the year or the eight months or whatever time. Uh, they, it all depends on every scenario. Uh, when I was gonna join the army before my, I have a medical condition, I have keratoconus. I was gonna, I, I qualified obviously, I, I got, a, got a high score and I qualified. I don't remember the GT of my first time, but I qualified for officer. Um, I, I was going to wait, but then uh, they discovered my medical condition in the physical and uh, I, I, I put everything in halt, but I was willing to wait. So it's a personal decision. I don't try to force anybody to do anything. I just tell you, uh, analyze all the options and do what's best for you. So that's a summary of, of the requirements to become an officer in each branch. Uh, these these you have a life, these you have a for a Navy or Air Force, you have limited attempts uh, for GT, Army, Coast Guard, and Marines because it's the ASVAP. You don't have a limited att attempts. If you don't pass, you wait a month. If you don't pass, you wait a month. If you don't pass, you don't, if you don't get the 100 and the score, uh, you can wait certain times. After three attempts, you would have to wait, uh, if I'm not mistaken, six months, et cetera. Um, so you don't have that limit. And also, uh, once you join, I've had people join Army, um, and uh, they might not have the 110, and then they contact me again a year or two years after, and they take uh, the classes they give them in the Army, and they also combine it with my classes, and, uh, and we get the 110, 112, 115. 110 is the minimum. Some people get much higher, um, but yeah. So anyways, I hope this video is useful. If you like the video, please leave a comment, leave a like, share it in your social media. You never know who this could help. You never know whose life this information could change. Somebody might be considering the military. They see this video, they get motivated, they start studying. Uh, and for all those people who are struggling with the ASVAP, haven't gotten a good score, in the description, there's a email or my phone number. You can text me or email me. I need help for the ASVAP. I'll send you the information of my classes and a free video of how I teach. So there you can see if you like it or not, etc. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's pass.